My name is Randy Reichenbach from Product Development. In this demo, I'm going to be showing how to get Trial LTM VE, that's LTM Virtual Edition, up and running in VMware Workstation. I'll be focusing on the how-tos, and I'll leave it to marketing to explain what LTM VE is and what you can do with it. So the first step is to go to the F5 Trial VADC website where you can download your registration keys and the software. So first log in. So once you've logged in, it tells you a little bit about LTMVE, and then you can choose to generate your new registration keys. Identify if you're an existing customer. I'm going to say yes. Enter the CAPTCHA and the number of keys from 1 to 4. I'll choose 2. Now those keys will be mailed to you and it typically takes about 3 to 5 minutes to receive those. So in the meantime, you can download the software. Here you would choose which big IP version. Currently there's just one. And select the trial. Read the EULA. This EULA is more verbose than the typical F5 EULA as it includes information about the virtual download. Accept. And then choose the appropriate image for your VMware product. So in this case we're going to select VMware Workstation 7.0 download, which is a zip file. It's worth noting that although Workstation 7 does support importing of OVF and OVA files, it doesn't support OVF 1.0, which is the format of our OVA. Also, by delivering VMX VMDK files for Workstation, we're able to configure the VM to work better out of the box. And you can choose your method for downloading. I'll choose HTTP and save that to your hard drive. Once the download is complete, Expand the zip file. And keep in mind that the on-disk image can grow to over 10 gigabytes. Once the expansion is complete, you can fire up VMware Workstation and open your new VM. Now you can take a look at the settings for this VM. And all these settings are set within the VMX file from RAM to disk to network settings. It's important to notice that you will need three networks. So the one bridged network is for your management and then two host only for your internal and external data. Now although you could change these settings. We recommend that until you get the basics working, you use this configuration. Okay, now you can power up the Big IP virtual machine. And here you will see possibly some text to the console that you're used to seeing with your F5 iron. And we will fast forward to the login.
So once you get the login prompt, enter the default login, which is root, and the default password, which is default. And now we need to set up the management port so that you can access the GUI. So if you're working from a, a laptop and expect to be away from a network that has DHCP, you'll probably want to set the, the management IP to be static. In that case, use the familiar config utility. But we also offer the ability to get the IP address from DHCP or automatic configuration of IP addresses seen in this screen. So let's choose that. Now, if we type B management, it will show us the IP address that we want to direct the GUI to. So now we can go to the TMUI, the big IP web interface. Make sure you use HTTPS and we'll go to the IP address returned by the big pipe management command. And we enter the setup utility and we need to activate the license. So for this we'll need a reg key Paste that there. That should look familiar. Accept the EULA. Make sure you read it first. And then licensing happens. And that takes, oh, about a minute. Now we have a licensed LTN. On the provisioning page, there's actually nothing to provision, or rather, LTM is already provisioned for you. So we'll go on to the platform page. Here again, you can specify either to get your management IP via DHCP or manual if you're going to be offline or needed to specify a static IP address. Give our host name. default password enter those same admin passwords now here you could either specify your network configuration or click finished I'm going to click finished and load a configuration that I like to use for HTTP testing. Before we actually use the LTM VE, here's a network diagram for the simple HTTP client server that I'll be showing. The management IP of both VMs are on the same DHCP net. As usual, you'll need an internal VLAN and self-IP, and an external VLAN and self-IP. Then I added a pool with the internal IP of the server as a member. And finally, a virtual server for the client, in my case Firefox, to hit. So now that you have your big IP LTM VE running, you'd probably like to pass some traffic. So for this test, we're going to pass some HTTP traffic. So you need both a server and a client. In my case, I, I downloaded a uh, CentOS 5.4, and so I'm going to use Apache as my server, and I'm going to use a web, br web browser as a client. So first I'll get a terminal on that VM. And start Apache. And let's 
look at the settings for the CentOS VM, the client server VM, you'll notice we need to have, again, three network adapters, just like the big IP. And so we need a bridged network adapter for the management port and host only for the data ports, just like the, the big IP. You can experiment with other settings. Um, there's an at, a NAT, and you could also uh, set the uh, the mat to NAT or host only. But for for basic tests, we recommend this setup since the big IP comes um, delivered with bridged host only host only. So now back over to the console for the client server. We'll open a web browser and we'll hit the IP address for the virtual server on the LTMVE. As you can see, F5 rocks. So now we could also verify that indeed we are load balancing traffic. We can go to the management port of the big IP. Our virtual server. Yes, there were two requests served. So there you go. LTN VE passing HTTP traffic.